Well, good afternoon and welcome to Goodison Park for Everton Live. My name's Rich Wolfenden, this is Sarah Halpern, and it's Wolves for the final home game of this Premier League campaign. Sarah, it's been a long old season, but here we are. Beautiful day at Goodison Park. You've oh, got to be up for three points today. We, we, we say this every week, <laughs> don't we? We've said this every show. But no, the final Everton Live, it's been an absolutely incredible experience. But how wonderful to see the fans back here and how kind of the sun to come out as well to welcome supporters back to Goodison Park. I uh, feel a bit emotional seeing everybody back in here, actually, because you just know what this place means to all of us. And uh, hopefully the, the players put on a show for the supporters tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's going to be like a proper atmosphere in Goodison Park for the first time in so so long like how much is that gonna benefit the players for one and you know us as well we're gonna enjoy it oh it has to doesn't it I mean I think it's safe to say we're sick of sitting on the sofa at home and listening to t tinned oh, you know Steve McMahon supporters oh, I can't, and, and I've enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> don't know which one's worse but no it, it's just great I mean we've seen in recent weeks obviously the cup final at Wembley we saw supporters there and we've been seeing it in recent games but to have fans back here at our ground Oh, it's got to make a difference to the players. And, you know, of course, players like Alain, Decore, Hamez, Godfrey, players that haven't played properly in front of a, an Everton crowd. I know we had a couple of thousand in, but mm. six and a half thousand today. Hopefully they get a feel of what it's like to play at Goodison Park. Yeah, absolutely. And you're probably going to hear a few announcements as the show goes on. It's not us, it's Graham, who's in charge of the music. So cheers, Graham, wherever you are. Um, but let's just talk about the match today. Um, cause, you know, still competitive fixture. We could technically still get European football, depending on other results. Um, Wolves at home, they've had a bit of a, they kind of, kind of had a season that we had last season where we were very inconsistent and, you know, they're still difficult to beat. So it's not going to be an easy game today by any means, is it? Oh, definitely not. You know, Wolves, I think, obviously, they've, they've dropped off this season. They lost Jota, of course, went over the park and, you know, Jimenez with that bad injury as well. So they've lost some key players, but every team gets injuries. They just really have struggled this season. I think, um, you know, let's try and make that count today. Obviously, we've we've dwindled away towards the end of the season, which is bitterly disappointing. We're all aware of that. But as you said, we could still get Europe. It's going to be very, very tough, yeah. but we've got to go with everything in these last two games, give the fans something to cheer today, and hopefully then we can head to the Etihad knowing that a win could, uh, no matter how difficult, a win could see us into Europe. But, yeah. you know, for pride, if nothing else, let's put on a good show and give the fans something to cheer. Absolutely. Let's. We won't discuss the Sheffield United game too much, oh, but what, but what do we need to do today that we didn't do oh. at the weekend? I mean, I think Sheffield United came here, didn't they? And they were giving it everything. Uh, I think that meant they, they finished with 20 points as well. They had pride to play for. And they just seemed to want it more than us on the day, which is obviously very disappointing um, because we had so much to play for. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know what went wrong. We've... I think the manager and everybody scratching their heads what's happened to Everton at home this season. The fans not being here will have a huge part to play with that. So hopefully today and going forward we won't ever have to see this place with no fans again and uh, we can carry that form forward. Yeah, I cannot wait for this place to be full and rocking. Either way, we've still got a packed Everton Live for you. This is what's coming up on today's show. So we will have the highlights from when we play Wolves earlier on in the season down at Molyneux. We'll also have the team news uh, an hour before kickoff in about 11 minutes time or so. We'll then uh, be hearing from Ingrid Mo Walt, who's um, retiring um, from the women's game. Uh, we'll then have the under 18s highlights, how they got on against Newcastle. And then speaking of Newcastle, we'll hear from the, uh, the North East branch of the Everton Supporters Club. We'll then have Leon Osman chatting to a couple of the, uh, the first team players over Zoom, as is the trend in 2020, 2021 <laughs> this season. Uh, we'll then see what Everton and the community have been doing in their All Together Now campaign. We'll hear from Carlo Ancelotti and then you get full free match commentary on the website evertonfc.com. And our special guest for the day, well, he's, he's not so special anymore, it's is he? Because we get him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ian Snowden is our guest. He'll be on the way in a minute. But before then, let's take a look at what's happened this season. Rodriguez, 
Boots to Dominic Calvert Lewin who scored. Charleston. Oh, it's a super goal. It's whipped in dangerously, and there it is for Yerry Mina. Back with Rodriguez, gets a shot away brilliantly. No space to get a shot away, but he's turned it back for Bernard. Bernard has scored, and how about that? This is fiddled through for Richard. And Coleman's whipped it in, oh. and Simonson has scored a quite beautiful goal. Dominic Calvert-Lewin's in behind here, and scores! Terrific finish! Yeah, a lot of good things certainly happened this season. Unfortunately, unfortunately not many of them at Goodison Park. Hopefully today, there will be some goals added to that show reel. He's made it. He's here. Bang on time. Stunts. That was so efficient. Better later than never. No. Better later than never. <laughs> 40 seconds on the countdown, <laughs> and he just walks along the back of the park end goal. <laughs> it's nice to see you anyway, Yes. Stunts. Yeah. Great evening. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was just saying to Sarah, like, you couldn't have picked a better, you know, day for the fans coming back to the ground, could you? More importantly, the weather's beautiful, but the fans are back. That's the main thing. I didn't. I wasn't here when we had the 2,000 in, so... Uh, mm. I'm delighted that there's six, six and a half thousand in tonight. I want to hear them make some noise. But more importantly, I want to see the players put a performance on mm. for these supporters tonight. They own one uh, because they've been watching some poor performances on TV at, at Goodison. But they're here. They're, they're in the ground. We need a victory. We need a convincing victory. And we need a good performance. Give these something to cheer about. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you'd expect there to be an atmosphere yeah. regardless of what happens, whether it's you know a negative one or a, or a positive one. But... Wolves, in a way, they've not really got anything to play for apart from pride, saying that, so did Sheffield United. Mm. But, you know, they're, they're there for the taking, really. You know, I'd like to think we've got better players, higher you know, skill and ability in our Do you know what? The side. reason I was late, Rich, is I was stuck on County Road mm. because there were that many cars fans. and fans at the <laughs> thing. And I'm thinking, wow, this is great. It's back to normality. All right, it's not a full house, but it's back to normality. I'm glad, in a way, that I were a little bit late because yeah. I've got a feeling that there's a game of football on at a stadium and uh, there's a buzz outside and yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to that and, and you're right Wolves haven't got anything to play for but and people say well Everton are not in contention anymore for Europe when you play for this football club mm. you play every single game you possibly can to the best of your ability and you try as much as you possibly can mm. because that's what the fans demand that's what the fans expect and uh, the boys need to know that and it was a huge disappointment the other night against Sheffield United I was sat on watching that. I thought, that, that is not Everton Football Club. Mm. And uh, I want that put in right this evening. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you talked about the, the scenes out on County Road and mm. Spellow Lane. I mean, I was stuck in the traffic as well. It was an absolute yeah. nightmare. But, you know, seeing like the little things like the burger vans and the fellas selling the programmes and that sort of thing, like it just by default kind of creates an atmosphere before a ball's even been it's fantastic. kicked, doesn't it? It really is fantastic. I've been watching the playoff game last night, the Blackpool game at the Oxford. They didn't have much to sing about, but mm. they were getting behind the team and you saw the Chelsea game last night. And It's just great to have fans back in. I'm, I can't wait for the game to kick off. Mm. I can't wait for the sirens to go mm. and listen to this crowd. Six and a half thousand. They'll make enough noise as though there's 40,000 yeah. in this ground. Yeah, so, so Wolves are coming here, you know, mm -hmm. um, they they kind of had a season that we had last season where they were very inconsistent. Um, what are they going to bring to this game today? Because they've not, you know, they're looking for mid-table. Really, yeah, they'll, they? be, they'll be relaxed. They play football. Mm -hmm. um, the manager likes them to get the ball down and, and pass and play. Uh, they're good on the counter-attack, but defensively they've not been as solid this season as they have been. They've yeah. been playing with, uh, like all last season, they were playing with three centre-backs. Conor Cody were the one orchestrating them at the back. The middle one, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and he was... He were very boisterous and he were organising them very, very well. This season they've gone to a two at the back and they've not looked as comfortable. Uh, so it just depends what kind of... I'm not interested in Wolves. Mm. It's it's how we perform. And we haven't performed at Goodison Park. Mm. And, yeah, you can say it's because they haven't had a crowd here, but nobody have had crowds in all season, so let's not make that an excuse. Mm. But I'm more... I, I want to see us play 
with a bit of fire in our belly tonight and it means something and let's let, as I say for these supporters let's get a win yeah I mean Wolves often play with tempo which is something which yeah. Everton have lacked here especially um, when it comes to Premier League games either way um, how do we get that tempo is it just maybe doing the pass a little bit faster six and a half thousand in this ground yeah you don't need any more that's the tempo this this crowd will make a noise mm. you don't need a tempo you come out the fans are back in the stadium you should get a buzz anyway you walk down that tunnel Z cars is playing that that's your buzz mm. that's your buzz from first minute to last minute yeah so I don't need to send them more I'm sure the manager doesn't need to send them more go out entertain this crowd that's in here and win this game of football yeah I'd love to see it I mean we're just seeing the players come in here and there a lot of these players obviously these supporters won't have actually seen no. in the flesh you know the no. likes of James Rodriguez I mean it feels like they've been here forever but what only a couple of thousand will have seen them in the flesh yeah. but you know Rodriguez would like to see him score a Don't goal. Don't get me wrong, the, the boys will be loving it that there's fans in this ground. Well, this feels like a second debut for them. They might get the a bit of stick now and again if they give a ball away or something yeah. like that, but that's part and parcel of the game. But these will be delighted that there's fans in the ground mm. and uh, it does give you an extra lift, really yeah. does. So, um, in terms of the Sheffield United game, which we won't, we won't mm. dwell on, um, there wasn't really any kind of standout performances in that game for no. me at all. Um, you could argue that Calvert Lewin and Richarlison had a great chance each within the space of about two seconds. Um, is that something that will be been weighing on their mind over the past few days, thinking, "Oh, if I'd scored that." Do you know what? Well, I'd like to give a bit of credit story. to Sheffield United, uh, if possibly could. They've, they've hardly they've got what how many sixteen points, something like mm. that, before they came here. They had nothing to play. They could have just rolled over and turned over, but they didn't. They come out. They they took an early lead, and then all of a sudden they were chasing. They were fighting. So give them a bit of credit. But we would we were really disappointed. You've got, you've got to beat teams like that. Yeah, mm. no disrespect, Sheffield United. Um, they haven't got really any players that you'd put in the Everton team on paper. Mm. Uh, on, on the evening there was, but uh, no. I, for how bad we played, I thought Sheffield United really dug in, really fought, wanted it. I shouldn't say this, but perhaps looked as though they wanted it a bit more than us mm. on the on the night. Um, but I'm sure, I'm sure we're gonna get a win tonight and it's not going to be easy because no games have been easy at Goodison Park for us this season but this crowd make a massive difference yeah it really does and when it obviously the crowd play a massive part in this but you know it's when we played teams at home where we've expected to dominate the game or dominate possession have more shots that sort of thing it's been lacking and surely that is the fans yeah. kind of thing isn't it to be the 12th man and you know yeah it is the these these fans let you know as well if they if they if they're disappointed in your performance they'll let you know they'll not let uh, let it go by too easy. Uh, it's a big thing playing for Everton Football Club. You've got to be able to handle the pressure, handle the crowd, and uh, but we've got some quality players out there who perhaps are not performing away from home. I I'm, I love going away from home and commentating because mm. we look as though we're scoring goals. We're good on the counter attack, but away from home we look a li little bit pedestrian. Uh, we don't we don't really know how to break teams down and it's mm. a bit disappointing so it, it's an opportunity whatever the lineup is tonight 11 players got to go out there and, and they've got to perform and they've got to set to Carlo Ancelotti you ain't bringing me off during the 90 minutes because I'm going to I'm going to go out there I'm going to run I'm going to tackle I'm going to shoot I'm going to cross I'm going to I'm going to give everything so I'm going to if I, if that, I were getting selected tonight I would turn around to Ancelotti and say whoa I'm playing full 90. I ain't coming off here tonight. Yeah, you want it in the sun as well. Of course you do. Of course yeah, you do. Speaking of that, I mean, we've got about 40 seconds till the team uses in, but who would you like to see starting today? I'm Obviously, not bothered. I am not bothered. bothered. <laughs> Pickford, Pickford, who's, who's doing his business at the minute, but the other 10 just know what you've got to do. So I am, I, I'm not bothered what team Carlo Ancelotti puts out. Just go and win this game of football for these fans tonight. Yeah, and you'd like to see us start fast, start aggressively, yeah. that sort of thing. Because yeah. we conceded goals in the first half, which then, you know... Yeah, it puts you on the back, back foot and... Then, you, you get a bit down then, but these I keep going on. It's great to oh, have them is. back. I, lo I love it. We're doing it here, and the, the crowd's in. It's fantastic. I've, yeah. I've got a buzz myself. I really <laughs> have. I really well, have. Maybe get yourself a kit, and you know, you could be <laughs> a spare wish. spot on the bench. There. I wish. Yeah, team news is in for Everton versus Wolves kickoff in just around an hour's time here at Goodison Park. The yeah, team news follows Jordan Pickford in goal once more. You got your wish, Snodds. Yeah. He starts once more. Michael Keane also in the back line as he was against Sheffield United. Alan continues in midfield as well. Richarlison also continues up front. For Everton, Dominic Calvert Lewin as well. Top goal scorer. What a season he's had, by the way. Brilliant, Dominic brilliant season. Gilfie Sigurdsson starts today. Came off the bench 
against Sheffield United. Couldn't do much, unfortunately, there. Maybe they get a chance today. Luca Dean also in at left back. And uh, Yeri Mina back in the line. And Abdelai Decore also in midfield. A bit of energy in that midfield is what we need. Ben Godfrey also getting a spot in defence today. As does Seamus Coleman. So it looks to me like it's going to be a, a back three. Three centre backs, yeah. The full backs, so similar kind of shape you'd expect to what we played against Sheffield United. But there's the bench. Lots of good options on the bench there, isn't there? Yeah, some um, great options. Not too many attacking ones. But no, yeah. it's a really strong bench, but uh, as you say, I think it's looking at that. Yerry Mina's back in. I think it's going to be the three centre backs. Luca Dean pushing up on the left as a left wing back. Seamus Coleman on the, on the right hand side. So. Uh, so how, how much have you missed this? Where the the fans clap every name as the, the announcer. I've not missed the grey and white on there because <laughs> he's so loud, isn't he? He so is so loud, loud but yeah. You turn the volume up because the supporters are back in now. So that I know, but the music uh, kicks in. But no, it's uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, so, it so, really. Um, there's the uh, the Wolves team. He's um, playing that young Morgan Gibbs White, who we've seen quite a lot recently in the uh, in the first eleven. Max Kilman's been in and out, but Trey Ore always gets highlighted as a danger man, doesn't he? When he, uh, do you know what he, he, he is? I, I wouldn't like to mark him in a way only because of his pace. Mm. I think he, he's careless at times. He gives the ball away on numerous occasions, but there's no doubt about it. He, he, is, he is dynamic when he picks the ball up and runs at you. But I don't think there's much of an end product, and he doesn't score as many goals as, as he should do. Whether he's been talked about a moving in, in, in the summer, um, mm. I don't know, but... Um, I think there's better. I think there's better players than Trory in that team. I think they've they've got some good footballers, mm. uh, but they're struggling. They they have struggled for results. Uh, so I, I'm expecting to win. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the player for me that stands out for them is one David Moyes nearly signed for us, probably 2007 something like that. It's Jean Moutinho, yeah, experienced central midfielder. Yeah. He, he's one of those players who just doesn't seem to kind of sprint, kind no. of like Rodriguez. He just yeah. everything just happens so naturally for him. Good players, good players find space. Don't have to sprint. Some good players. I were yeah. always on the move. I was sprinting <laughs> regular. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, good players find create their own space. Always look as though they've got bags of time on the ball. And mm. you're right about him. He's a, he's a He's a good, good footballer. Yeah. So today it looks like we're going to play the three centre backs. Holgate's mm. obviously dropped to the bench. Mina's come back in. Um, how tactically is that going to benefit us against this Wolverhampton Wanderers team? Is it even more of the ball? Or? I don't know. I, I don't want to score a, a Gilfy uh, Sigurdsson goal tonight. Okay. We'll get you down the bench shop before kickoff, Snods. No worries <laughs> about that. Cheers. Uh, now, any questions for Snods? Sarah's going to ask him plenty later on, as per usual. Hashtag Everton Live. Get on Twitter, and Snods will be answering those questions. Uh, now, we have already played Wolves this season. It was earlier on, and we did pretty well. This is how we got on. Here's Iwobi. Now, Hammers Rodriguez. Trying to pick out Luca Dean, he's done just that. That's the cutback for Iwobi, that's the shot, and that's the goal. Everton in front, five minutes gone here at Molyneux. No recognised striker, well, does it matter? Alex Iwobi hammers home, took a slight deflection on the way. Who cares? Everton lead at Wolves. Iwobi involved with the initial build-up. Hammers Rodriguez, who else picking out Luca Dean? And the cut back there for Iwobi to hammer it beyond Rui Patricio. Here's the Wolves corner. Maybe Mina got something on it. Eight Nori goes past to Corey and drills one in, and Wolves are level. Well, well, well. Ruben Neves with the finish. Six in the box for Everton, but it only finds the head of Dendonka. Gomez picks up, sends it back in. It's a decent one. It's Keane. What a header! Brilliant from Michael Keane. Well, he turned 28 yesterday, and that is the best birthday present he could have asked for. What a thumping header to give Everton the lead. 14 minutes to play. And Everton are back in front at Molyneux.
tell you what, a couple of good goals then, weren't they? It won't be. That first time striking to the bottom corner and then big Nick Keane. Oh, that was, I remember that game watching it and just being so buzzing, you know, yeah. to get that win and... Like you said, it was a great, great couple of goals and big Mickey Kegger in on the goals. You love to see it, don't you? It'd be big great. Mickey Kegger. That <laughs> nickname, great. nickname lasted about two weeks, something like big that. Big Mickey Kegger. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it'd be, how great it'd be to see him as well on the goals today. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. I'd love to see it. Um, but why I've got you here, um, the women's season obviously comes to an end very, very shortly. They've got one final game, is it, in the league tomorrow? Yeah, so we've got Chelsea tomorrow in the FA Cup. I'll actually oh, be travelling to London tomorrow morning to meet up with the team and then the game seven o'clock tomorrow massive massive game to finish the season on there mm. so really looking forward to it yeah hopefully they're still feeling a bit down after the champions league well there's no other way of putting it but they got battered didn't they, oh, by they Barcelona. Did. you know that chelsea side fantastic they obviously they won the the women's top division in this country got to the champions league final and then absolutely lost it within the first few minutes so mm. uh, their, their pride will be hurt they'll be looking to bounce back so we've got to be wary of that but like you said hopefully we can pounce on them while they're a little bit uh, wounded and, yeah. and try and get through to the next round So and you know Everton will be hoping to match them next season won't they in the league so it's kind of a good you know touch point to set the standard for the start of the next campaign isn't it Oh, massive because I think you know you look at Chelsea and and that is the team that you strive to be like and that is the, the aim ultimately to be up there challenging to win titles challenging for Champions Leagues we're way off that at the moment but I think you know we're going in the right direction and if we were to get a win tomorrow then it'd be fantastic and of course Ingrid Movold has announced a retirement as well so her last game what a career she's had in the women's game and let's try and make sure we we do something good for her last last time involved in football as well yeah, absolutely. Well, keep your eyes peeled for that game tomorrow. And speaking of Ingram Mowald, uh, we caught up with her this week after she announced her retirement. Mo, you've taken quite a difficult decision to hang up your boots at the end of the season. Uh, talk us through your decision. Yeah, obviously that's been the most difficult decision in my life and it has been some really tough uh, weeks. Uh, but I think it's the right decision for me and that I'm ready to start my next chapter in life. So what is that that next chapter? Because you know you're only 31, so you've still got a few years uh, playing-wise if you pursue it. But what, what have you got uh, lined up? Uh, I'm a physiotherapist, so um, I want to work with uh, young athletes doing injury prevention and stuff. And that's yeah, that's my dream job. So I'm really lucky to got that opportunity and to have something to do after my career. And I'm also looking forward to spend some more time with my friends and family of course and and yeah just start a new adventure you're just touching on there about you know it has been a difficult season for you personally because you've been away from your family and you know sacrificed so much so um this decision albeit difficult you've got that nice feeling of you know going back home and seeing your family um at the end of the season yeah obviously i think that's been a part of it but uh, I've been thinking about it this decision before also and but I really wanted to play the Euros but then obviously that got postponed last summer so I yeah I went down here and, and wanted to uh, explore this this uh, adventure and stuff but then yeah it's been a tough year but I've been enjoying every single moment here in this club and yeah it's been it's been an amazing journey. When did you come to decision to to retire? I think I told Willie five six weeks ago. Um, yeah, and he has been amazing through all this. He he was a big support and has handled it really really well. So yeah, he's been incredible. Obviously, Everton prides itself on being you know, the people's club, a family club when you've been away from you know your own family this season how much is this you know the coaching staff has touched on Willie there and the squad been to, to help you through that that period yeah I felt like home from the very beginning like as you say the whole staff and the whole team around this club as well uh, they're all brilliant the players are brilliant and the coach and and the staff uh, but they are even better human beings and that's what I appreciate the most and I'm so so happy that I got the opportunity to get to know every single one of them. So it's really people's club and yeah, I'm really proud to have been a part of it. How do you reflect on your career then, you know, especially in your time in England, albeit just one season here, but 
an FA Cup final to look back on and uh, you know one of the club's best finishes in a uh, good part of a few years. Yeah, I never imagined that I would play in FA Cup final at Wembley. That was really huge and one of my biggest moments in my career. Uh, and yeah, it's been it's been a dream, like more than I ever dreamed. Though uh, I, I think I have achieved so much, taking tight twelve titles in Norway and been playing the Euros and World Cups, represent my country a lot of times, and and also got the opportunity to come here and experience the I think it's most competitive league in the world and. To meet world-class players every single day and every single weekend, it's been it's been amazing, and yeah, I'm happy that I could end my career here. It's Ingrid Mobold there, a real heavyweight in the women's game, and we're desperately sad to see her hang up her boots. But hopefully, we can get a win tomorrow against Chelsea. But whilst we were watching that VT snods. We heard a rapturous uh, applause, didn't we, as the players, the first of the players started to make their way out onto the pitch. It's it's quite emotional, this, isn't it, having fans it, back in here? It really is. It really is touching. Uh, the three keepers came out with uh, Alan Kelly, the goalie coach, and uh, rapturous uh, welcome for the uh, for the three keepers. Everybody stood up and applauded, and I'm sure Jordan felt proud as well that uh, fans are back in, and hopefully he's been in great form lately. Uh, Jordan, after a bit, he'll admit, bit one or two sticky performances, uh, crowd were questioning him, but he's bounced back fantastically well over the last couple of months, and uh, you could see he's. Uh, I hope he puts it. Well, I'm hoping he doesn't have to put a performance in tonight. I'm hoping he's not tested because it'll prove that we're on the front foot and we're gonna we're, we're gonna be uh, in possession of the ball a lot. So I want to see Jordan Pickford have a quiet evening this evening, <laughs> Sarah. Yeah, that's, that'll do us, won't it, Ian? I think we don't want to see our goalkeeper, our defenders, too busy today. But yeah, what do you think it'll do for the for the players, especially going into the Euros? You know, Pickford will be one of them, but we'll have plenty of players going away to represent with their countries. Do you think getting that taste again, obviously there should be fans for the Euros, do you think playing in front of the supporters will give them that sort of yeah. thing to head into those? I'm, I'm sure there's a buzz in the dressing room already. I'm sure the boys can't wait to get the socks up and get the warm-up tops on and get out there because they'll get a fantastic reception. Even though the performances have not been good, that's an understatement at Goodison Park. They've, n they've not been good. But the fans won't, won't, they won't think about that when them players come out for the warm-up and when they come out uh, to the sirens and Zed cars. The fans won't think of the last performance against Sheffield United. They're in the ground, they're seeing their football team, they're seeing their football club back to some kind of normality and they, they're seeing the boys run out in a blue shirt and that's that's what they've craved for for a, a good year now so uh, make some noise oh, make some noise make some noise and like you said you know we, we're all very well aware of how disappointed Everton's home form has been this yeah. season but for today for every single fan that's been lucky enough to get in the ballot and be here today the emotion we all know what this place means to us as human beings mm. and for every single person being here like you said they're just going to want to roar on the on the boys in that Royal Blue jersey aren't they? No we're, we're not going to gloss, uh, gloss over the, the performances at Goodison they have been disappointing and, and everybody's we've had a great opportunity to get in Europe to finish above Liverpool as well but we, we've let ourselves down here we, we away form has been brilliant but tonight I don't I, I just think you'll uh, you'll hear some noise from the first whistle and hopefully the boys it's all down to the players yeah. put a performance on these will have forgot about the other night again it'll still be in the back of the mind obviously after the game but if you go out there and you put a great performance on score goals make these happy and let them forget about Sheffield United which is which is not easy it's still it's still in the back of my mind thinking how poor was that but I want to forget about that I want to go away talking tonight wow how good was that atmosphere how good were the boys we've won three or four nil that's more like it I want to go away back home to Southport thinking I enjoyed that Absolutely. Yeah. There's some chips from the Goodison Supper Bar on the way home or something like that. You don't get a body like mine eating chips, Sarah. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Well, let's hope we finish on a high here today. And speaking of finishing on a high, here's how our under-18s got on in their last game.
well done to our under 18s there with a massive 4 2 win and a late goal as well. Late goals are great, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but we've just been speaking, obviously, the main thing is hard to talk about anything else. The fans being back here at Goodison Park, they'll provide energy for the team. And speaking of energy, someone who's recently back in the side, who's been fantastic this season, Abdullah Decore, he'll provide that energy, won't he, in our midfield today? Yeah, I admired him at Watford. I really did. I thought he uh, he caused us kind of problems with his energy, with his uh, with his runs into the opposition box. We've not seen so many of them this season of him getting into the box. We saw see him score an header uh, in a game that he, he made a great run into the box. But the energy levels that that, that boy's got, he's fantastic. Um, I get tired watching him. Yeah, he is. He covers every blade of the grass. All right. He'll give the ball away now and again, carelessly. Once he gets that out of his game, though, again, as a midfield player playing against him, you think, wow, when's this... When's this boy going to stop <laughs> You wouldn't like to play against him because his energy levels are fantastic. And uh, he's got Alan in there who's just sitting. So it's great for him to get about the pitch. Don't care about your positional sense when you've got somebody just sitting in behind. He's, Alan should be encouraging him. Go on, get forward, try and get into that box. But he's certainly, uh, he's certainly enjoying his time here at, uh, at Goodison Park. Well, that's his first season here, mm. isn't it, of course? You know, what a first season in Royal Blue for the likes of Alan and Decore and Ben Godfrey and, and Hammers. You'd, you'd imagine, you know, things will only progress going forward, wouldn't you, in the seasons to come? Yeah, they, they'll be disappointed themselves that there's been no fans in. They, they'll have heard so much about uh, the Everton support and the, the atmosphere at Goodison. The away support is tremendous. Oh, yeah. Never a spare ticket wherever we go in the country. So... They'll be they'll be buzzing. They'll be they'll be desperate to play in front of forty thousand, to play in front of between three and five thousand when we go away week in and week out. So uh, it'll be it'll be eye opening for them next season. But uh, I'm sure these six and a half thousand will make enough noise for them to realise that wow, this place could be rocking with forty thousand when it's full. Absolutely. Best fans in the world, no doubt about it. And speaking of fans, it is our supporters' club of the match. And this week, we're going up northeast. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rachel, branch secretary of the Northeast Branch of Everton Supporters, or NEBES for short. We're a mixture of season ticket holders and those that can attend the games when they can. We run a minibus from the northeast. Our first pickup is Bladen, and the minibus runs for every home game, and we attend as many away games as we can. On a match day before the game, you can find us in the Black Horse in Walton. We usually get down for about half past twelve for a three o'clock kickoff. And like I say, our members are from the whole of the northeast region, and we're a mixture of young and old, as well as exile scouts. We were founded in uh, March two thousand and eight. Well, I think there were four or five of us in the early days. Pre-COVID, we could be found watching our games in the Junction or the Crow's Nest in Newcastle City Centre. We've had some good nights in there, um, especially for our regional supporters' nights, and we've had we've been privileged to have the club ambassadors as well. So we've had Snods Up Diamonds with Darren Griffiths, and they've done a QA session for us, and we've had raffles. So hopefully, once we get through this um, pandemic, and lockdown eases, we can get back to those nights again soon. So who's your favourite player then? Uh, well, it has to be Jordan Pickford, because he's a local lad, he plays in my favourite position, and I'm really proud that he's England's number one. How about you? For me, it's got to be this man here, Duncan Ferguson. We saw the passion as a player, and now as a manager, and he's just, he's everything you want for your club, isn't he? And an interesting fact about Nebes, um, I'd have to say, in front of a full house at Goodison Park, the last time we were all together against Man United, the last people to score a goal in the Gladys Three Tens was actually two members of the North East Branch of Everton supporter at uh, the Crossbar Challenge at half time. You can contact us via our website, any evertonians.co.uk. You can follow us on Twitter at, at EvertoniansNE. You can contact us on the Facebook page, Official Northeast Branch of Everton Supporters, and you can email us on info at ne-evertonians.co.uk. 
lovely to see Everton supporters from across the globe. Well, not that far away this time, northeast of England. Uh, but it's not it's just Wolves are the opponents today. I was just asking you about your experience of playing against Wolves, whether it be a Goodison or against or at Molyneux. Yeah, yeah, but had some good performances um, at Wolves, especially. Um, they were in the doldrums for quite a few years as well, mm. um, and then it were the likes of Steve Bull. Um, yeah. He's he's famous legendary goal yeah scorer, absolutely he? legendary amongst the uh, world supporters and uh, him and Andy much up front but uh, I just do you know what I like the kit as well Wolves. all gold and I, I just remember from years and years ago Derek Dugan playing for uh, mm. you won't remember him Rich I've seen his name yeah down Derek Dugan he was <laughs> famous for Wolves and uh, yeah the gold kit and uh, I just I just like the atmosphere as well when, when we've been recently when I've been commentating the build up to it and the songs and seeing what Wolves come out as the team as well so mm. yeah I think he's got great tradition yeah. uh, he, he, he's, I'm, I'm delighted that, that they are in the Premier League and I hope they can stay there for many years because mm. it's only an hour and 20 minutes down the oh, road yeah, exactly. it's far, it? it's great atmosphere great playing surface so uh, yeah Long may they stay in the league. Yeah, you just time that perfectly as the as players coming out yeah. behind yeah. us. Yeah, and uh, it's definitely about Wolves. See who start for them today. John Ruddy, former Everton goalkeeper. That's right. Yeah, John had a, a good spell at, uh, at Goodison. Came, uh, did he come from Shrewsbury originally? Uh, I think he might. Was it Norwich? I know we went, went to Norwich, didn't he? Yeah, I think he yeah. might have been Shrewsbury, John, yeah. when he came. But yeah, he's had a uh, he's had a few years. Yeah, players. Our players are just coming out now. The noise. Love to hear it. The noise has come on. It sounds like there's so many more people in the stadium than what there actually is. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. You, you can see the supporters. You, you know, in. You don't get a better feeling as that as a player when you're coming out and. I mean, already that's a motivation or a lift. Oh, isn't of course it? it is. Of course it is. There's a spring in the step. You can see this players have got a. They're sprinted on yeah. instead of just jogging on today. They've sprinted on so. Let's, let's hope that six o'clock they're sprinting around the pitch. Yeah, well, we got about what's that, 34 minutes until kickoff. Still plenty to come on Everton Live, including the questions getting fired over to you, Snods. Hashtag Everton Live. Get onto Twitter and ask any questions over on there if you can. Now, you may have seen earlier on in the week on Twitter, actually, uh, Leon Osman, former Evertonian, of course, uh, had a little bit of fun and games with a few of the first team players. This is exactly what happened. Yeah, I don't think I could spend a time on a desert island with you, Tom. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty hard work, that, you know. I'll show mine if you show yours. <laughs> oh, God. This is going to be oh. fun. If you weren't playing in the Premier League, what you'd be doing? Playing in La Liga. <laughs> <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> Brothers, no you, you'd be a boxer. You'd be boxing, yeah. Tom, you wouldn't be a boxer. No, no chance. No. Damn would. I'm too pretty Skate to fight, aren't I? Skateboarder. <laughs> I'll be doing this in my Aussie. <laughs> what about me? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'll be this, be that. I don't uh, know what I'd be. Don't think I could do like a desk job. Hang on. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the friend. Good desk job, this. <laughs> Tom, you could definitely work in an office. Sorry, what's that? Sorry, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Who's posted the most cringe-worthy TikTok, and what was it? <laughs> don't say it, don't say it, don't we say it, don't say it, don't say it. Don't say it, don't say it. Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. All right, maybe we can all say it on three. One. No, because you're going to make me say it and not say two, it. Three. Wait, one. One, two, three. Two. Say it. You say it. <laughs> Thomas froze. <laughs> oh, God, my connection is going. I thought Ozzy had actually frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just holding my hands up, waiting, to, waiting for you to say it. The only person actually I know in the team that's got TikTok is Xiao Virginia. How much was the TikTok? Download TikTok and go and have a look for yourself. We'll have to look that one up then. If you had to spend quarantine with one other player, who would it be and why? I'm thinking teammate, but you can do a football player if you want. Yerry Mina. Why? Because he's always happy and he's a good guy. Hey, if you two are sitting on the couch, he's taking up most of the couch. I'll pick an arm he's small. <laughs> and a really nice man. <laughs> We're really getting me wet. Yeah, Bernie, right. Too touch. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> I've got Dave off. You picked me? Really? Yeah, yeah, just because you're a nice lad and it'll make it a bit more enjoyable. That, see, Ozzy, that's one nil to me now in this quiz. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you're all winning. But I have to be able to put you away like now and then. Okay. So you can see more of that on Everton's social channels, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's everywhere. Go and check it out if you can. Uh, now, Snods, we were just talking a moment ago. Um, end of season awards is coming up. Um, young player of the season, we asked Graham Stewart the other day, uh, and he said Ben Godfrey. Would you agree with Graham? Yes. Yeah? 100%, yeah. Wherever he's been asked to play, centre-back, right-back, left-back, he's always performed. I think he's going to be an immense player for Everton for many years to come. Mm. He's got great pace, he's a determined character doesn't like getting beat uh, when when players are coming up to him he defends well I think he's got some great years ahead of him man mm. hopefully they're all with uh, Everton Football Club as well yeah I think he's I didn't really know much about him uh, when he came obviously I, I I'd known he, he were at Norwich and he was one of their better players but I didn't know what he's how he performed or whatever but from the first game I seen him I thought wow he's got electric pace mm. which helps massively but also his will to win, Rich, which is a, is a big thing. Mm. It's a big thing, especially in a young lad. If you've got that will to win, you'll go a long way in, in football, and he's certainly got that. Uh, I think our fans have been very, very impressed with him since his arrival from yeah. Norwich. And he'll no doubt get a great reception here oh. in front of the, the 6,000 fans. Yeah. You're very warm welcome. So so he's your young player of the season. Yeah. What about your player of the season? That's maybe a bit harder than... It is player. a bit harder, but... When you look at the goals that Calvert Lewin scored, all right, he might people might say he might have had a lot more, he might have scored a lot more, but he's he's 23, 24 year old. Mm. He's improving all the time. He's becoming a proper proper number nine. Yeah, he is. Yeah, uh, he makes it uncomfortable for defenders, opposition. He's great in the air. He's got energy levels that he'll not stop running. So for me, I thought Michael Keane early doors was playing really really well mm. obviously Michael has been left out a few times had a couple of injuries so for the goals Dominic Calvert-Lewin scored and in some of his performances I think Dominic's looking as he's going to be the player of the year okay well we'll keep our eyes peeled for mm. the end of season awards which there'll be more details of on EvertonFC.com uh, in the not too distant future so yeah keep your eyes peeled for that now you may have also seen uh, this Everton's uh, involvement uh, in the all together now campaign showing our inclusivity of all backgrounds, all genders, sexualities, that sort of thing. This is what we've done over the past year or so.
it's, it's better than what it was. Things are still not where they need to be. Everton showing that they are absolutely a class act off the pitch, the All Together Now campaign. But you know, the People's Club, has, ever since I've been a little kid, it's been the People's Club, and they're still doing that now, you know, despite there being no fans in the ground. They really are a pillar of the community, aren't they? Everton? Yeah, it's incredible. It really is incredible, this football club, what they do for the community. And um, when we were called the People's Club, wow, we, are, we exactly are the People's Club. Mm. I remember uh, I was listening to Talk Sport many, many years ago, and Harry Redknapp was on, and he was saying, how well run. Everton Football Club is off the field uh, with the former players uh, foundation that they had and now Everton in the community and uh, I can't wait being an ambassador for the club I can't wait to get back to work getting in schools going to hospitals and seeing the people that uh, that matter that really do matter uh, and it's not only it's not only Everton fans as well what what we provide we provide all this community around here and uh, even you talk to you talk to people, older people that support Liverpool, and say, whatever the football club do for this community is mm. quite incredible, and 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 they really they're really proud as well. The the Liverpool fans, the yeah, older yeah. ones as well, because we're, we're just a caring club. We mm. really are, and Denise has driven that uh, since she arrived at the club, and uh, a lot a lot of praise goes through to Denise for that mm. for the way the club's run. Yeah, and the Everton fans when they sign, uh, sorry, the Everton players well, when they sign they know. for the club, they know they they're going to do that part. Marcel Brands, um, Carlo Ancelotti, they bought, they know how important it is a club like this to to feel the warmth of the, the community and the players. They respond as well. They, they, if they're ever asked to do anything for the community, there's not one grumble. Get yeah. out there and help the community. And is the captain Seamus Coleman one of the Incredible. men on the fair front? Because I mean, in that video there, he was in pretty much every single. He's fantastic, Seamus. Uh, I've done many things with him uh, in the community, and he's uh, that, that just sums Seamus Coleman up. Mm. He's a fantastic guy. He's a fantastic leader, and he's been brilliant for this football club. And he knows what the fans mean to this football mm. club. He really does. He's kind of like the the example on the yeah, pitch, he is. isn't he? Kind yeah, of he is, and he, he lets the other players know the new, the new players and and the foreign lads who don't really know much about it. I'm sure Seamus uh, talks them through it when they first arrive at the club, being captain. How important it is to be in the community, to do things for the community, mm. and uh, yeah, he's been a brilliant leader, brilliant captain. Yeah. Uh, Seamus Coleman can't speak highly enough of him. Yeah, and he starts today, which yes. is great, in front of the supporters. And uh, just a quick reminder, if you get onto Twitter, hashtag Everton Live, get your questions in for, for Snods. We might actually just go around the park end and see if we can get some, oh, no. some live there'll questions. Be a, there'll be a few giving me a bit of stick there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, maybe next season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, it is Wolves uh, this afternoon, and this is how we've got on against them in the past.
some great goals against Wolves there. Uh, Richarlison, he scored his first goal for the club against Wolves. He scored a brace. He'll be looking to get on that score sheet today, I hope won't so. he? I hope so. I want to see his little pigeon dance. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> to be fair, Sarah, I don't care who scores. I just I just want the boys to put on a good performance. Um, we've mentioned it at the start of the show, how disappointing it has been recently watching games here. So... Come on, boys. Come on. I'm up for this myself tonight. Oh. I really I really am. I'm looking forward to it. The buzz of the crowd gets you going. I ain't played for 30 years. And, uh, You're ready to go out, this, aren't you? This crowd still get you going. It really does. So I don't know how the players are feeling, but uh, I'm a little nervous, a bit apprehensive, but looking forward to this. Oh, I'll be honest as well. Obviously, I was just standing off when uh, you were on with Rich then. Mm. When the players came out properly and, and the roar and you're in Everton. I've got a little tear in yeah. the back of my eye there, Snods, I'll be we, honest. We tend, with what's gone off in, in the world for the last, what, 12, 14 months, you just forget what it is all about. Coming to empty stadiums, I've been travelling to away grounds and just going in, doing my commentary and walking away. No atmosphere, dead and everything. And, and yeah, it's been nice on the road because we've been winning. But it's not the same. It really ain't the same. And, and I said to Rich earlier, I said, coming down County Road, I knew I was doing a bit of football traffic. I knew <laughs> yeah. I was going to be late. And I'm thinking, I don't mind because yep. the fans are back. And uh, yeah, I got caught on there for 20 minutes. But <laughs> it would all because the fans are back in football. And that... I didn't want to miss this show, but I wouldn't mind if it, uh, just for the fans that the, 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 the back in the stadium. Absolutely. Listen, a bit of traffic on Spellow Lane and County but Road. I, but, I said that, but I want the fans to walk away from this game tonight and been entertained yeah. and enjoyed it and cheered and cheered some goals. I don't want them walking away going, oh, another average performance at Goodison Park and come on. Yes. Come on. Let's oh, I'm give it. Really let's give it them. Let's give it them. Absolutely. Well, this will be our last question time of the season yes. as well, which I'm quite upset about. Um, I've, I've memorised these you ones. Not? I'm getting there. It's better late than never. Uh, Jesse Paxton asks, can England win the Euros? Why not? Yeah. Why not? They've uh, got a great squad, got bags of talent to choose from. be interesting to see who he leaves out. If you can leave a player like Jack Grealish out, oh, you, must, you must have a love of a squad because I think he's a sensational player and it doesn't look as though he might not be going because the likes of Phil Ford and Mason Mount, etc. Gareth seems to have got them in the plans, so uh, he must have abundance of talent to pick from. So we've got to go in as one of the favourites, definitely. And you think, obviously, Pickford, we've spoken about this before on Everton Live. Michael Keane, a question mark over him. Do you think he'll get the call, Ben Godfrey? Do you think they'll just miss out this time? I think they're just going to miss out. Uh, it'd be so unfortunate for him because... To play for your country is your pinnacle of your career. Obviously, this is your bread and butter. This is the club you, you play for, your club you die for. But to play for your country as well is a big, big, big thing when the national anthem, three lions, etc. Uh, so they'll, they'll be disappointed if they don't go. I'm not saying they're not going to go. We're, we're going to have to wait for uh, gather squad announcement. But I think they might just miss out. Saying that, um, the lads at um, Man United's out. Um, yeah, of course. Skipper, uh, Maguire, so, yeah. Yeah, he looks as though he's struggling, so perhaps there's a place there for somebody, so you never know. Uh, Jordan will definitely go. I think his form recently... He's been brilliant, hasn't he? he, he he's been outstanding. Uh, the last the last couple of months, his performances have been really, really spot on. He seems to be concentrating a lot more, seems to be uh, saving, saving efforts at, at crucial times as well. Yeah. Um, so I'm delighted for Jordan, great lad. I just want him to see him do well for our club first and foremost, but also for England as well. Definitely, and of course, the Euros over the summer, it's just great having footy on all the time, isn't yeah. it? And restrictions lifting, so everyone will be drinking pints in the sunshine and hopefully cheering England on to a victory. Yeah, they, they, they really will, that, but that's the summer to come. We've got two games, I want to win them both. We've got this tonight, and then we go to the Champions, Man City on Sunday. So uh, I'll be over there and... Uh, yeah, they're getting the trophy, they deserve it, they've been absolutely, absolutely outstanding. I'm sure we'll give them a guard of honour as well as a, as the club that we are, but uh, I'm hoping that as far as it goes, let's uh, <laughs> let's go and beat the champions in their own service. In their own, in their own backyard. Yeah, in their own backyard, as they say. <laughs> I, absolutely, I absolutely love that. As you said, City deserving champions, but let's hope we can rain on their parade. But first, we've got this one today, and here is the main man, Carlo Ancelotti, ahead of this time. 
Carlo, you said you were embarrassed by your team's last performance here. How confident are you it will be much better tonight? Yeah, I expect a great reaction from the team. It is an important game because we have the supporter backs. Uh, and this is a really good news for us. We would like to show a better performance, a good result, a good performance at home. Well, was. Um, we were not able to do this this season, and I hope at the last game of the season we are able to do. Two of your best results this season at Goodison have come in front of supporters, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the two, two great performers with 2,000 supporters here. Uh, and so I think that uh, our supporters, as usual, they are going to help us to play a good game. There will be changes, of course, during the summer in terms of your personnel. Are there players tonight playing for their Everton futures? No, no. We play for the result to get three points and then we have to analyse the season and, uh, and make the right adjustment for uh, the next one. Where is James Rodriguez tonight? Uh, he's out because he was a little bit tired, so he didn't play. He was out. Uh, he played against Sheffield. I prefer don't have a risk with him. So he's got fatigue, but he'll hopefully be back for the weekend, will he? I think so. And in terms of Europe, it's slim, isn't it? Do you still have hopes, or is that not at the no, forefront no, we need of your to mind? Have, we need to have hope because, uh, you know, it, it was an unpre unpredictable season. But uh, so they keep uh, the hope alive, and we need to win tonight. Well, fingers crossed, Carlo Ancelotti is the winning manager in, well, a couple of hours' time, as it's Wolves uh, just about to kick off. What? Everton players have just ran in, and that is kind of a great metaphor for the final Everton Live. It's been an absolute joy doing this show. Hopefully you've enjoyed it as well. We've well, enjoyed it, haven't we? We've absolutely loved it, and we've got a great team of people around us as well, so thank you to all of them. Um, and we hope you've enjoyed it. We hope we've brought you close to the action. But, yeah, that's a wrap. Yeah, that's it. I mean, a great highlight for me is that we've not been struck by a ball once this season, <laughs> which is brilliant. But remember, you can get... Uh, full free commentary on the website. Snods just ran across because he's the co-commentator today. EvertonSC.com for that. And we'll see you next season. <laughs>